Hey there, this is Rick. I hope you're having a great day. This is just a very brief introduction to this uh, video, which is actually a remake of a video I did 12 years ago. Now, the reason why I'm remaking it now is because actually it's probably quite a useful video and it's already had a quarter of a million views, but unfortunately I got a copyright claim on it that I just could not get lifted. So I decided to do a whole new audio track um, I've used the old footage, but I've done a, a new voiceover for it and I've polished it up a little bit, put a few extra little bits and pieces in it and I decided to republish it. So 12 years ago, I made a solar powered uh, food dehydrator based on the solar furnace design. Now there are a lot of videos on YouTube where people have made solar powered heaters for their houses um, with nothing more than beer cans and scrap wood. And it's a really efficient technology and it can produce quite a lot of heat. But I couldn't find any videos on any application of that technology for uh, dehydrating food. So I decided to sort of invent my own one based on this solar furnace technology. And this video is a result of what I did. So if you're interested in making this sort of thing, hopefully this video will be useful to you. Also, if you wait to the end, I'm going to add a few hindsight points that I didn't include in the original video. So without further ado, here comes the footage. Enjoy. Okay, so I took a load of beer cans. I chopped the bottoms off them. To do this, I used a sanding machine and I sanded the bottoms down until it broke through the metal and I just gave it a little tap and the bottoms just fell out. Then I used tin snips for the tops to just cut these little quite dodgy looking slices into the top and then using pliers, I bent those little slices to make little fins. And the idea behind that is that as the heat rises up through the, uh, the tins, the actual little fins make the air swirl and turn around inside the cans, hopefully getting everything that little bit hotter by the time it reaches the top. Next thing is to start sticking the cans together. Now what I did here was I laid a couple of spare pieces of wood on the ground in a kind of V shape and that then became my workbench. You can simply sit the tins in there and it holds them in position quite nicely while the glue dries. For the glue, I just use a high grab or instant grab adhesive and it was just a case of applying it around the middle of the can and then squishing them together. So while the tins are drying, I used a core drill to cut out the holes, the necessary holes in the end caps for the main assembly. There we have the cans nicely dried and I just need to lay them in position and then roughly set up the box arrangement around them. Once I'm happy with the arrangement, I need to apply a couple of temporary braces to just hold the box in position while I apply the back. Now these are just temporary struts. They're only there to hold the box in position and I'll be removing them as soon as the back has been attached. So with the temporary struts in place, I can now lift away the main assembly and apply the back. Now applying the back is simply a case of using small screws around the edges. Once the back has been attached, you can flip it over and now I can remove the temporary struts that were holding it together. Now it's just a case of gluing the cans into position. Again, I'm using an instant grab high bond adhesive and I'm gluing the cans all the way up the back so they don't move around. Once the cans are in place, it's just a case of sealing them into position so the top and bottom areas have a clean run through of air. So there are no areas where the air is going anywhere other than inside the cans. A final seal up. 
and we should be ready for painting. So now it's time to paint the solar collector assembly. In this particular case, I'm using a red primer. Obviously a mask is very important when you're using spray paints. It's pretty nasty stuff, it has lots of VOCs in it. You really don't wanna be breathing this stuff in. Once it's dry, then it's time to apply the final layer of paint. Now this is a matte black or flat black, and that will be the best color you can paint it in order to collect the greatest amount of heat. So there we have the finished painted product. It still needs a few bits doing to it, but we'll get back to that later. In the meanwhile, we need to build a very basic A structure, and that structure has to be just wide enough in order for the width of the collector to fit into it. So a little test fit there, and now I'm happy with that, I can go on to build the main frame structure for the dryer. And here we have a very, very simple, basic skeleton for the dryer that's obviously freestanding on legs and there the solar collector fits into it quite nicely. So there's the basic structure, nothing too complicated about it. I've included an extra bar across the top and that will form a kind of letterbox arrangement in which the solar collector will slot. So now we've got the basic structure in place, it's time to start building the main structure which is actually the food dehydrator box itself. Now first of all I'm going to apply the runners. These are just strips of wood on which the shelves will sit. Once the runners have been added then we need to start concentrating on boxing in the actual containment area. Now for the base, I used some scrap pieces of UPVC that I had left over from building the conservatory. They also double up as a nice wipe clean surface. You can also use wood. For the back, I just used strips of scrap wood. So now we have a back and a base. For the first side, I placed a big sheet of plywood. Then I applied the roof. Again, that was just made of scrap wood. Then the second side, again, that was just a sheet of thin plywood. Then a door, that's just held on two hinges with a little catch. And there we have our basic food dehydrator structure. And at the bottom there, you can see the little letterbox where the solar collector goes. Now for the solar collector, I just need a little bit of extra wood there at the top in order for it to direct the heat into the dehydrator box. So I've just used a couple of scrap bits of wood and the heat will now feed nicely into the food dehydrator. So there we have the exit nozzles of the solar collector and they should heat the actual box up quite nicely. All that's left now is to add a sheet of perspex to the front of the solar collector, and that should act like a greenhouse with the beer cans inside, and that is what's going to generate most of the heat. Now to cut a sheet of perspex, all you've got to do is score it along several times with a very sharp knife and then you should just be able to bend it and it should snap to the size that you want it. To drill perspex, you must have a block of wood underneath and you must be very, very gentle with the drill. This stuff is unforgivingly brittle and it's very expensive as well. So you don't really want to be making mistakes if you can possibly help it. 
So with the protective cover removed from the Perspex, I'm now just attaching it to the solar collector box and just removing the protective film. And et voila, we now have a finished solar collector. That thing will produce some serious heat when the sun is shining. Now this is the entry point and the temperature is 21 degrees. This is the exit point and the temperature is 47 and a half degrees. So you can see it's working extremely well. Now I did try a few experiments where I blocked off the air intake and actually installed a small electric fan that was run with a solar panel. But with all my experimenting, to be honest, this didn't make enough difference to warrant actually installing the fan. It actually worked just purely by convection quite nicely. So all that's left to do now is to paint the actual structure and hopefully that will enable you to leave it outdoors and make it a little bit weatherproof. And of course, we need to build some shelves. So all I did for this was just to take some thin pieces of wood, shape them into a rectangular frame, make sure they fit, of course, and once I was happy with the way they fitted into the box, all I needed to do was just add some mesh. And for that, I used fly screen, which is the same sort of stuff you get for windows. So here's me making a basic structure and uh, I'm just using glue and staples. And then here's the fly screen going on. And again, I'm just stapling it into position, stretching it over the frame. And the end result is a rack with mesh. So you can place the fruit or whatever it is you want to dry on the top, but the air will still be able to travel through. One more test fit, but that is basically it. So the sun hits the solar collector, heats up the air within the beer cans, and that then pumps air through convection into the actual dehydrating box. Now all that's left to do is to make the dehydrated box weatherproof. So I'm going to put a little roof on it. This is called flashing strip. It's self-adhesive and it's what is used to join the roof from an outbuilding to a wall or another structure. As I say, it's self-adhesive and I just positioned it sort of roughly where I wanted it. And when I was happy, just pulling off the backing strip, applying it and then press it all into position. And we've got ourselves a, a little waterproof roof. So there we have it. With the roof bent over the edges, it should take care of any drips or leaks. Therefore, if it does rain and you happen to have some stuff inside, it shouldn't actually get wet. So there we have it. That's the finished product. Now I did some experimenting and a tray full of sliced tomatoes will take between two to three days of sunshine to fully cure. Now that's in the UK where we don't get a huge amount of sun. If you live in a very sunny climate, that may be a lot quicker. So there we go, that was my solar powered food dehydrator. What I didn't include in that video was shortly after I'd made it and had used it a few times, I actually drilled a hole in the top at the back, put a bit of uh, mesh over it, and it significantly increased the airflow, which made things work even faster. So um, that's a really good little tip because yeah, there were in the actual video itself, there was no actual air outlets uh, at the top. But if you literally just use a core drill, drill a, I don't know, a one or a two inch hole at the top at the back, um, yeah, the airflow will go through much faster and the, the things will dry out uh, even quicker. So that's it from me. Feel free to leave comments in the notes below. Uh, subscribe if you haven't already, and I will see you in the next video. Until then, take care.